Hey everyone! Okay, so before I start talking about anything, I just want to remind all of you that below in the description box there's little flash forward things. So if you just want to learn about a particular um, section, for instance, you just want to know what camp is like, you can click on that below and then it'll bring you straight to the camp section in the video. So that being said, let's get started. So to introduce myself, my name is Roslyn. I've been doing summer camps for two years now. My first summer was in 2012. I was in Tokyo on Team 4. Woohoo! Um, that was really cool because, I mean, when you think Japan, you think Tokyo. So it was really awesome getting to experience that. Um, this last summer, 2013, I was an intern for Guy in Nagasaki. So that was a little bit different. But I also did the international village camps, which are very different than the typical camp setting. But they were both really great experiences. Um, the one thing I definitely have to say about uh, USA Summer Camp is what you put into it is what you'll get out. If you put a lot of energy into camps and you're really devoted to your students, I mean, it will shock you how close you get with your campers um, and your team and just what an amazing experience it is. Um, <clears throat> it's a really life-changing experience, and I know for me personally, like, I took so much away from it, but even from my teammates, people that, um, ended up applying who weren't really sure how they felt about working with kids, but now they absolutely love it and they want to go into teaching, um, and so it's a really awesome life-changing experience, and I hope you're up for it because it's a great time. It's going to be the best summer of your life. Naturally, you're going to have some time off, and if you want to go explore and do stuff, you will need to fork up some cash yourself, um, and so it really depends on you and kind of what you think you're going to want to do. I know some counselors who only ended up bringing two to three hundred, and that was fine for them, and I know some counselors who brought a thousand dollars, and so it really kind of just depends on you, so things I would suggest um, thinking over is where you're going to stay. Tokyo and Osaka, those areas are way more expensive than if you're out in Kyushu, um, Nagoya, those kinds of areas. Um, so think about where you're staying. Also, kind of think about what you might want to do. Are you a big shopper? Do you want to get a lot of souvenirs? Um, or do you just kind of want to sightsee and do some random stuff and you don't really have an agenda? That's kind of going to change how much you might want to bring. I recommend around $500 because that should kind of cover all your bases and most people I know that brought $500, you know, had a little bit extra. So it's al I would always rather be overprepared than not have enough and be screwed. Another piece of advice for money is that you may want to exchange your money before you go. Um, and if you do that, I would really recommend doing that at your bank. Um, the airports kind of have higher fees. They like charge a fee to do it. Your bank may or may not, depending on your bank. Um, but you will want to let them know ahead of time because American banks just don't have hundreds of dollars worth of Japanese yen to exchange for you. Um, so they have to order that. So I would say do it a month at least before you go um, because then you're, it's better to be safe than sorry. The other thing you can do um, is pull money out at a Japanese ATM, but I would always let your bank know that you're going to be abroad and using a card um, because you don't want them to cancel your account or that card while you're in a foreign country. That's kind of a mess to deal with. So um, you can pull your money out of ATMs. I usually do it at a convenience store, but I know post office and government buildings usually have an ATM with English operating, but most of the convenience stores have that as well. Um, you want to look for the orange ATMs because that'll be the ones that'll help you out. Some banks do charge a fee per transaction, so if you're going to like use your card to swipe for every purchase, it may very well, like mine does, charge you like 2% of every 
transaction plus another 2% for an international fee, so I just pull out cash and use cash there. And they're really a cash society. It's kind of strange because you wouldn't think that, but it's just easier to have like the actual money on you. Okay, of course when you're going abroad, you're going to think about, oh my god, that long-ass flight. And it is, let me tell you. To get to Japan, um, it's about 14 hours, and to get back here in America, it's about 11 hours. And I'm in the middle of the country, so it might change depending on where you are, but pretty much it's going to be a long-ass flight. It's going to be half a day. And so, it's not so bad. They've got free movies, and they usually have a pretty good selection. But what I do, instead of trying to figure out my sleep schedule before, like a week before, and try to get in that habit... What I've done every time, and it's worked well both there and coming back, is I just look at my itinerary and when I'm landing. If I'm landing in the morning there, then I'm going to sleep on the flight. And so that means having to stay up all night the day before, but, you know, that's kind of what you got to do. And then if I'm landing at night, I'm just going to stay up that whole flight. So I think that's a lot easier because the flight itself might change how much you need to sleep. Um, and so I would just say look at when you're landing and go according to that. Okay, now when you land is probably going to be the scariest part because you're in a foreign country. You probably can't read the signs unless you're landing in Tokyo. And so you might kind of be freaked out like, oh my god, where do I go? What do I do? Nobody sent me really information about this. Don't worry. Um, it seems really disorganized. It really does. But there will be someone there for you with a sign right outside of the gate. Um, both times I've walked out and been like, okay, there's my guy. That's where I go. And, I mean, you're arriving in a group, like, everyone's arriving at the same time, so you will see a huge group of Americans and just cluster with them and you'll be fine. Um, and then they'll take you to your hotel and they'll have, like, tickets for if you need to take a subway or a train or something. Um, they'll have that for you, so it's not too crazy. I mean, it seems overwhelming, but don't worry. They're not going to leave you behind, for sure. So, just kind of follow the crowd of excited, young, crazy Americans. So, if you're in Tokyo, you're going to be in a little bit more luck as far as seeing English around town. Um, in Tokyo, you'll find more people speak English, and there are more English signs because it's a big tourist area. Sorry, my hair is kind of being gross right now. Go away. <laughs> um, but it's a big tourist area, so there will be... Some English, not a lot, not as much as you would expect, of course, but um, it's better than, like, if you're in the South. If you're anywhere besides Tokyo, it's going to be a little more tricky. Um, that being said, just kind of act out what you're trying to say. Um, use a Japanese accent when you're talking to someone, and they'll instantly understand you. Like, if you say, where's the ATM? They'll, they might look at you strange, but literally, if you say, where's the atm -u? they'll understand you like that. It's really odd, but that's kind of, when in doubt, use a Japanese accent and it should you should be okay. As far as food, that can be a big kind of nerve-wracking thing for some people. I know my first summer that was for me because I'm really picky even when it comes to American food. And so, you know, like going to Japan, it's like, oh, it's gonna be all raw fish and eel and squid and that's all they're gonna have to eat um but it's not like that actually I think you might be surprised at how many um food options there are really similar to American food like they do these deep fried pork cutlets and they've they do like a lot of croquet style stuff um so it's just like a battered thing that's deep fried um Usually the pumpkin ones, those are so good. And I don't even like pumpkin. Um, so you actually might be surprised. And a big tip I have, of course, along with being open-minded, is not asking what it is. Just try it. Of course, if you're a vegetarian, that can't be helped. But, for instance, there was a time when my friend who was with me um, was a vegetarian and we were going through, like, a cafeteria-style um, lunch. And they had these, like, little deep fried nugget type things and they looked like chicken from the outside you couldn't tell and so she asked one of the Japanese students that was there um, at the same facility and she was like is this meat or fish or what is this and they said oh fish and so we both grabbed it and then we sat down and ate and when we bit into it 
she was like, whoa, is this chicken, dude? Can you tell? And so I, I took a bite of mine, and I was like, I don't know, that really tastes, and the it tastes like chicken, and it has the same texture. And we later found out it was squid, and I was shocked, because I would never eat squid if you told me it was squid. Like, I would say, gross, no way am I eating that. I don't care if it looks normal, <laughs> I'm not eating it. But I was actually really shocked. So, my first summer, I struggled a lot. Um, because I am picky and I didn't have an open mind. I mean, like, if I was forced to eat something, you know, like, you're gonna have to eat it. You can't starve yourself. But at the same time, um, I was really picky, so some things I would just push aside and maybe get, like, a giant bowl of white rice. But my second summer, I was really open-minded, and I didn't have really any problems with the food that I ate. It was fine. I mean... You're going to have some camps that have really great food. We had one camp facility where the food was literally like walking into an American buffet. It was awesome. And then we had one where they basically set out a plate for you. Um, you didn't really get to choose. And it was a lot more traditional and a little bit more difficult. But you can find something that you can eat. And you can share stuff with other people that you don't want. Um, so the food really isn't that bad. Just keep an open mind and don't ask like... What is this? Because I, I don't want to eat. I don't want to eat seafood. Um, because chances are you actually might like it. Another thing with food is that um, when you have camps, you will want to wait for all of your campers to sit down with you. Um, you'll usually eat with one of your groups that you're working with. And <clears throat> you're going to wait for everyone to sit down and then you'll say, like, clap your hands together and say, Itadakimasu, which is Itadakimasu. And basically it's like, thank you for the food, I'm going to eat this. And you want to wait till everyone sits down because it's really rude if you don't. Another thing with food in Japan is that it's really rude to waste food. So if you're not, most places will have a buffet style. Um, and if you're not sure that you're going to like something, take a little bit and you can always go back and get more because it would be better for you to take a little bit and not like it than take a lot and not like it <laughs> and then waste all that food. Um, and you can, like I said, you can also share. So sometimes I would try something and I wouldn't like it and I would just like ask a student like, do you want to eat this? Cause I'm not going to. And if you say I'm not going to eat it, then <laughs> usually they'll like force themselves to eat it for you because they don't want to waste food that much. Even if they don't like what you grabbed, like they would rather them like suffer through it than you waste the food. So try not to. Um, it can be a little bit difficult, but it's not that hard. Like, you can do it. I believe in you. Okay, I ramble a lot about food, but two other quick things that are really interesting, I think, um, and it might be good to know, is that they don't put soy sauce on their white rice. They just like it white. Who knew? Um, and so apparently, this is what I heard. I don't know if it's a myth, but they put soy sauce on their rice when they give it to their dog. So basically you're eating dog food if you do that, um, which sometimes you won't care. I I honestly didn't mind the white rice, but once in a while I was like, I don't care, I'm putting soy sauce on. And your campers will be like, eh, eh, like, and freak out. And I had campers like calling other students over like, oh my god, look what she's doing. <laughs> when I ate it and I was like, I don't know, it's good, American style. Boom. <laughs> They're like, I... No, like, American style. Psh, you don't have to eat it. I'm gonna. <laughs> um, so, that's kind of interesting. Um, another fun fact is that they don't tip. So, when you go out to eat, don't tip. I guess that's kind of rude. Like, oh, you must need the money. Um, because they, ta they factor those types of things into the meal. So, the food there is a little bit more expensive, but you don't have to tip. So, there you go. All right, we've arrived at the moment we're all waiting for. What is summer camp like? Ah! Okay, that was weird, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I'll try not to do that again. But here, if you look, um, is a summer camp schedule. So this is kind of what your summer is going to look like. You'll have about um, two camps back-to-back. -back. Generally, that's what it's going to be. And then... Um, an off day, like a set of off days, so maybe two to three off days. 
and that's kind of what it's going to be like and somewhere in there you will have a host day if you choose um, we'll talk about that later but so that's kind of what that looks like just so you know okay so the camp team kinda looks something like this you'll have one American director um, called an AD um, and they basically kind of are the go-between between the schools and the counselors and so they'll be giving you kind of instructions on what the schedule is gonna look like who's partnered up with what groups that kind of stuff who will be just randomly helping out um, and they'll also be the MCs for the camps so they'll be doing a lot of the behind the scenes work and the instructions and stuff like that you will have one Japanese director and they're really awesome all of your J staff is awesome but people refer to them as a JD and so what they do is they're kind of like the AD but on the opposite end so they go between the Japanese schools and the American director and now for the hot shots of camp um, <laughs> there will be about 20 American counselors give or take so we lovingly refer to them as our ACs um, and they basically work with the campers of course they are the counselors and so you guys are in charge of running the camps making sure they go smoothly working with the camp um, groups the groups of campers and trying to help um, them utilize their English. I don't really say that you teach them English because of course you teach them some English but it's more um, to get them to be enthusiastic about speaking another language and to have fun. Like I don't, I mean of course Guy would say like we want them to be it to be really productive but at the same time a big part of camp is to have fun like because that's why those schools come to our camps because they are so much fun and the students are motivated um, to learn English and work hard because they do have such a great experience and so really being an American counselor is all about giving the campers that amazing experience and so last but certainly not least on this list are the Japanese counselors and you'll have maybe two to four depending on your team um, and I mean our JC's man they do all the grunt work so really appreciate those guys because they work their butts off to make those camps go well and they don't get paid what they should um, but they do it because they want the experience and they really want to be there um, and it's a great opportunity for them to be able to try to do a program like this and basically they will help the ACs with their campers um, translate instructions Maybe if a particular group is struggling to really get the concept of an activity, they might hang around and like help them out along with their counselor to figure out kind of what they want to do with that activity. And basically they do all the crap work. And when I say that, I mean like during the orientation, they make like hundreds and hundreds of little name tags. Like they cut all these things out. Um, for all the camps, they do so many props and things like that, that, man, like, just really appreciate your staff because they work so hard in those camps, and they really deserve it, and I don't think they get the recognition they deserve, so love your J staff because they're awesome. The first thing I should tell you about camp is rule number, well, okay, not for the campers, but for you counselors out there, rule number one is, like, being flexible like I can't tell you how many times the flexibility card has been pulled while I spent my summers in Japan um, but quite a few because I'm a very structured person I like having a schedule and staying to that it's not how this program works um, I hate to break it to you but things change frequently um, and usually you're finding out as like literally as the change is happening um, so keep that in mind. It's not a big deal. I mean, you literally learn to deal with it because that's one of the things that I've grown from in this program is that I am not a flexible person, but or I wasn't, but I am now because you just get used to it. You're just like, okay, it changed. It's not what we're doing anymore. One of the f most fun things about camp, I almost said fun, is, I, don't, I know some of you caught that, um, one of the most fun things about camp, though, honestly, was how much you traveled. And, I mean, it can be a pain in the butt, especially 
depending on what kind of luggage and how much you packed, but, um, it can be really fun, like, we spend a lot of time on, like, a coach bus, you know, just, like, going from one camp to the next to the next, because usually they were all at different facilities, so you had to drive around, um, and that was honestly one of my favorite memories, um, from camp, was just going on the bus, like, hopping on the bus, some people didn't like it, but... I loved it, and we'd always stop at, like, a rest stop, so we got to, like, take 15 minutes to kind of, like, look around at some of the souvenirs and, like, get some food, fuel up. Um, actually, at one of our summer camps, they left in a bus, we left in a bus, like, right after them, and then they had, they were heading, like, the complete opposite direction of us, but somehow, we ended up at the same rest stop. And we saw all of them, and they were freaking out, and they were parked right alongside of us. And some of them were trying to get on a bus, and we're like, no, 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 because it was hard to get rid of them in the first place. Um, and this was our camper, this was our camp with the all boys that were, like, too cool for school and, like, didn't want us. But then at the last day, they're like, oh, I don't want to leave. <laughs> and so they were, like, parked right alongside us, and I cracked my window open, and I, like, held out my ice cream, I'm like, you want some? Because they're like, ice cream. And so I was like, I opened my window, I'm like, you want the ice cream? And I like stuck it out, because they were actually like close enough to reach. And they like opened the window, I'm like, ha <laughs> psych, nope, my ice cream. But then I ended up giving them each a bite. And everyone else on the bus was like, me too! And I'm like, no, this is my ice cream, two of you's enough. <laughs> um, so that was really ironic. But being on the bus was a lot of fun, because you got to like, you literally were like traveling all around Japan and like, not all around Japan, but an area of Japan, and just, like, seeing the different little farming communities, or just driving past big cities, through big cities, it was really fun. I, that was one of my favorite parts of camp, was on the bus, but remember that, because you're going to be traveling a lot, so depending on how much you travel, you might not want to pack a lot of stuff. Think about that. So, of course, they're not just going to throw you to the wolves and be like, okay, you arrived. Now, here's a bunch of students. You don't know what you're doing. Go. So, your first week will be spent doing an orientation where you will um, get to know what the activities are, set up props, um, different things like that, getting to know your fellow counselors and your J staff because they're awesome. <laughs> um, and so, um, it's basically a time to prep and get ready for the craziness that is USA summer camp. Um, but really what I would suggest too is really get to know um, your fellow counselors because you will really be surprised at who on your team you click with. And so use that time because you're not going to be crazy busy with campers. Use that time to get to know everybody on your team. Like maybe for each thing you do, like so in the morning you might be making props for a particular activity. Sit with like one group of ACs and then maybe for lunch sit with a different group of people and then maybe when you are talking about doing camp skit, sit with a different group of people. Um, because really during camp you get so busy and you're with your campers the whole time um, that orientation is the best time to get to know your fellow. Um, staff and I mean you really want to have a strong bond going into the craziness that is summer camp okay there are three main activities you do as far as getting the campers um, acclimated to English and you do these activities every day the first one is one minute drill and one minute drill is basically you have a list of English phrases like Hello, nice day. Do you like ice cream? I love ice cream. Different <laughs> phrases like that. And I, one of them is for sure, do you want to play dodgeball? But so you have different random goofy English phrases and they have to memorize and recite as many as they can in one minute. And so this is one that, this is an activity that the campers really excel in because they're used to memorizing everything. So you will literally like see some groups like, where they're literally doing this and, like, <laughs> blocking out everything and just sitting and memorizing. Um, but, you know, maybe do that for 15 minutes, but then bring it back in and say, okay, we're going to play a game with one-minute drill. And what I always did was I had Uno, um, and I would say, let's play Uno, but every time you pick up a card or you lay one down, you have to say a phrase on the list. 
And so that was really fun because they got to play a game while they were learning. Um, and so they don't get to do that in school, so that was fun for them. You could do, like, ball toss where you throw a ball around and you add more, and each time you throw it you have to say a phrase, that kind of thing. So you can get creative with it, but it's pretty much a memorization activity. My story is the second activity, and my story is basically the, a chance for the campers to kind of express themselves. And so they have a couple of minutes where they can talk about themselves, tell a story, talk about a hobby, something they like. Different qualities that make a My Story great are a lot of actions to go along with their My Story, and I think personally that a story is much more interesting than just, I like baseball because it's fun. I like drawing because I'm good at it. Um, and some, for some kids, that's the extent of their English ability, so they can't go much beyond that, but if they can, really push them to try. Um, we had one camper who told a story about his dog, and somewhere in the story he started telling all the tricks that his dog can do, and then he started doing them, so he was like, oh, my dog can roll over, and so then he got on the floor and, like, started rolling over, and it was really interesting and fun to watch, and um, he got an award for his, I think, I'm pretty sure he got an award for the My Story he told. So that was really cool. The last main camp activity that is done every day is called Camp Skit. So you'll have a group that basically has to come up with some sort of short play. Um, and every camper has to have one to two lines. This, for me, I don't know how I always got the groups that could never come up with anything, but I always got the groups that could never come up with anything. Um, most camp groups never had a problem with it, but mine always just kind of blanked out. I did have one group that really wanted to do a fight on the subway, so they knew instant. it was a group of boys, all boys, and they knew instantly they wanted to do a fight of some sort, and someone was like, let's do a fight on the subway! So... That was cool. Um, sometimes they'll ask you to be a part of it, sometimes they won't. I got to beat up one of my campers in a baseball skit, so that was fun. <laughs> um, of course, I didn't actually beat him up. but um, So they can really struggle with this, but it can be a lot of fun. My biggest piece of advice is just let them come up with a topic and help them write the lines. Um, and that's actually a really fun activity to do, even if they're struggling, because they kind of act out what they want you to like help them say so they'll be acting something out and you'll be trying to figure it out and they'll be like okay you should say this and you'll write it down for them and it's really it's weird how you're kind of both disconnected but you actually connect a lot more with your camp skate groups I think so you have three main camp activities that you do every day and you will have a different group for each one so you'll rotate so for the first activity, um, one minute drill, you will have, say, camp group A. And then for my story, you'll have camp group B. And then for um, camp skip, you'll have camp group C. So you will rotate and it won't be the same group of campers. So that's important to remember because I went into the summer thinking, oh, like, I'll get little candies for all of my campers. But I thought we were just going to have one group through the whole, like, camp. But you really switch it up. So that might be something to think about ahead of time. Along with the three main activities, you'll have um, three kind of special events throughout the camp. Um, and these were my favorite parts of camp. So the first one is campfire. And basically, you throughout camp, the campers learn a bunch of camp songs that they can sing with actions. And one of the nights during camp you will gather around a campfire and um, sing all the camp songs and you also get to make s'mores with them which is awesome they're not real s'mores but they're close it's like two cookie cracker things Hershey's chocolate sauce <laughs> and then a roasted marshmallow so it's for them they love it they've never had a s'more so for them they're like oh my god so yummy and for me which who i love s'mores by the way i'm just like it's good but it's not a real s'more <laughs> um so campfire is super fun um you have to be careful with some of those boys though they like running around that thing 
and you got to smack them upside the head. Don't do that, though. Don't actually hit your campers. <laughs> um, another one of the activities is called American Carnival, and basically, it's like a mini carnival. So, you'll have different stations, like you'll have a ball toss station, arm wrestling, face paint, balloon pop with, like, the darts. Um, oh, you do the cakewalk, so where you play the music, and then if you land on the right number, you get cake, or some sort of treat, um, and most of the booths have candy, and so it's really fun, because campers can just run around and do whatever they want, and you're basically manning a station. I always did face paint, which was really fun, and it got pretty creative some parts during camp, like, one kid wanted me to paint his face with, like, a turtle who, that was, like, an American flag, which... I wonder if I can find a picture of that, because it was actually really good, I, if I do say so myself, you know. <laughs> um, but so, American Carnival's fun, because they can just run around and do what they want. The last special event kind of thing is called Dance Party, and it's an hour of a dance party, woo! And I love dancing, so that was my jam. I was all on the dance floor going crazy. Um, dance par party can sometimes be a struggle. We had two all-boys camps my first summer, and those boys just wanted to run. They didn't want to dance, they just wanted to run. Um, and so sometimes you'll have campers that aren't really jazzed about dancing, so just entertain them the best you can. Um, my biggest piece of advice is pick half iconic songs like Thriller, Cha Cha Slide, Electric Slide, different things like those, like the ones that everyone can do, Cupid Shuffle, which you will be annoyed by. <laughs> the end of the summer, you will hate that song. But it's a good song because it's really easy to do that dance. And then half um, kind of current songs, so like I hate Justin Bieber, but we had Baby on our list. <laughs> And I wanted to shoot myself, but luckily it was the first song, so once you got past that, you were good to go. So, like, Justin Bieber, One Direction, things that they can kind of recognize, that they know, um, and that are kind of, like, easier to, like, free dance to, I guess. Um, Party in the USA was my jam. Nobody could, like, touch me on that song. Um, and so... Like, if you're not the most outgoing person, dance party's not actually a scary thing because you can basically, like, hang out with the kids that don't really want to dance, because there will be some. Um, so, my first summer, half the team kind of just did the wallflower thing. They didn't want to groove, and totally understandable. And then the other half of us just danced with the groups that wanted to dance. And that was really fun because a lot of the times they would, like, follow what you were doing. So if you were, like, doing, like, one of these, like, everyone in the group would start doing it. And so after a while, it get kind of hard to, like, come up with, like, new moves or something. I don't know. But that was fun. I love dance party, but I like dancing, so. So the campers have to put on a skit, but the... Um, counselors also have a chance to do a little skit for the campers during summer camp, and we call it Soup Skit, and the plot is basically that there's a soup shop, and some patrons come in, and they're hungry for some soup, and they eat their soup, and then they realize, oh my god, it's poisoned, and they die, and another patron comes in, sees the dead people, calls 911, and the ambulance come. And I don't know why Japanese kids think it's so funny, because it's really not funny that people are dying, but um, they think it's hysterical. And so then you basically repeat that in a couple different themes, like we did Godzilla, Super Mario Brothers, um, Backwards, Opera Style, Interpretive Dance was really funny. Um... And so you do it a couple different times, and then you the last one, you just speed right through it. Um, and if you want, you can check this link right here somewhere, because um, I have a video of one of our soup skits posted, and that one was the bomb, so try to top that. That's, that's my challenge to you. Try to top that soup skit, because it was great. One thing that is always a question is, what kind of facilities will we, we be staying in, like, What's my bed going to look like? Am I going to be sleeping on the floor? No, you will never sleep just on the floor. It may feel like that sometimes, but you will never just be on the floor. 
So you will have a variety, I mean a wide variety of like facilities. We stayed in kind of a camp place, so they were all kind of like cabins. Like it kind of reminded me of Girl Scout camp. They had a big dining hall, a gym, like kind of like a meeting hall type of thing, a theater, a fire pit, and like cabins. And we had beds in those. So that was one of ours. We also stayed in more traditional type inns where you have the tatami mat um, and you have your futon. And so um, try to learn, you'll learn quickly how to set up a futon, but there's a specific way to do it. Um, some people complained about sleeping on a futon because, yes, it does feel like you're sleeping on a floor. Basically, you have like a foam mat that's about this big. Um, so that's not a lot of padding if you like a big cushy bed. But I found that I was really worn out by the end of the night that I never had trouble sleeping. So maybe if you want to like lounge around, yeah, that's not comfortable. But usually during camps, like it wasn't a problem for me. One thing to note is that Japanese pillows are really, really hard by American standards. It's like, you know those little bean pillows? It looks just like that, but they like stuff this thing to the max with those beans. So if you try to like have a pillow fight and throw this at someone, you might actually leave a bruise. So you probably want to bring your own. I brought my own last summer and I plan on doing it if I go back again this summer. So keep that in mind, you might want to pack a pillow. Um, but we had bunk beds, we had different... Basically, you will probably experience every um, type of sleeping arrangement. So here's a miscellaneous camp thing, um, situation, that's a better word, is that you may have to either sleep in the same room with your campers or actually bathe with your campers or both. Um, that would probably be most likely with your elementary school camps. Um, to them, it's not weird. Like, they just do that. So, try if you're feeling weird about it, just try to put yourself in the mindset to, the, to them that's normal. And it's not weird. And so, maybe that'll help put you out of your weirdness. But, that's one thing to note. So, here, as you can see, is a sample camp schedule. Um, usually, the campers will arrive sometime around noon, maybe a little bit before. If they arrive a lot earlier than that, you might be playing some games with them um, just to kind of get to know, know them before lunch. Um, you will eat lunch with your orientation group, and during orientation, you basically come up with a group name with them and make their name tags. And then you'll have an English activity, you'll switch to the next one, dinner, um, another English activity, and what they mean by English activity is one minute drill, camp skit, and my story, those things. And then um, the the events might change, like ours usually changed if there was, if it was going to rain the second day, we would do campfire on the first day, but one of the camp events, bath, and then bedtime. The next day you wake up, morning assembly, clean, breakfast, usually with whatever group you're going to be working with next. Your English activities, lunch, English activity, American Carnival, which is a nice break in the day because you're doing a lot of English activities up till then. Um, after that, another English activity, dinner, English, campfire, bath, bedtime. Um, and then your last day is another half day. So basically camp is one full day and two half days. You can look at it like that. Um, and so... Well, the first day is kind of a full day, so we'll call it two and a half days. Um, but you'll wake up, do morning assembly, clean up, breakfast. You will go back, usually, and have to clean out their rooms for a checkout. So, like, have it completely cleaned out, um, them all packed and ready to go. And then you'll do what's called Ego Kai, which is basically an award ceremony. Um, and then you'll do a second round for, like, finalists, in which... At the second Ego Kai, if they make it that far, they will basically be presenting in front of the whole camp. And so sometimes they can get nervous, but usually they're really excited because the ones that um, usually win are the ones that are putting in the effort to try to win. 
Um, you'll do lunch, and then afterwards you will announce who won the awards, and you will do a sort of graduation ceremony. And this can get really long, depending on your camp, so um, you just kind of grin and bear it for them. It's kind of exciting because, you know, they graduated from USA Summer Camp, um, and it's been an amazing experience, so they kind of want to drag it out. And then, finally, you do, like, a closing stuff, and then they leave, um, and so that's kind of what camp looks like. So the last thing I'll say about camp specifically is that you will be shocked at how close you get with your campers. I mean, my first camp, our AD told us that we would gr get really strong bonds with our campers um, and like cry when they left and all this stuff. And we're like, in two and a half days, I don't think I'm going to get that attached to a bunch of little like middle schoolers. But after our first camp, a lot of people cried. Like, I don't know that I was crying, but I was certainly like, oh, I'm going to miss you guys. Um, they were crying. They refused to get on the bus. They were literally coming off the bus. Like, they'd get on, and then they'd get <laughs> back off and, like, hug us and, like, you know, all this. And so they had all these buses lined up. And then we kind of ran in between them and started doing camp songs. And literally every student on those buses got up and started singing the camp songs with us. It was kind of really sad, but it was really cute at the same time. And when they d drove away, they were just bawling, a lot of those students. So campers really bond with you really quick. I mean, I wouldn't say you're going to change their whole life, but um, they'll definitely remember that experience. And I think... You know, you want to strive for those types of goodbyes because even though they're sad, like, you really do feel like you made a huge impact on your campers. Like, I just remember feeling like, am I famous or something? Like, <laughs> these kids should not be that sad that I'm leaving, or they're leaving, technically. But um, they really do, and they love spending time with you um, if you put in that work. So those are the types of things that really make it rewarding and that you should really strive for when you're working through a camp, even if it's stressful. I mean, we had some camps that was just like, when they go, I'm not going to be upset. Like, I'm going to be like, get the hell out of here. But man, at the end of those camps even, they, I mean, the campers were just like, no, I don't want to go. Like, um, cause they don't get experiences like that during their school year. So it's really fun for them. Um, and that kind of makes all the difference. So think about that while you're going through camps. Um, yeah. Alright, so a lot of you, I'm sure, are wondering, what are my off days going to look like? Because I want to climb Mount Fuji, um, which I did, and it sucked, but it was awesome. Um, so, <clears throat> like I said earlier, you will probably have two camps back-to-back. -back. That's subject to change. You never know. The schedule is kind of set, but it can change. You can have schools cancel or maybe switch a date. Um, and so usually what it looks like is two camps back to back and then maybe three to four off days. Um, and during off days, you can kind of go off and explore and do what you want. You have to be back at your meeting place at a specific, like a specified time. Um, and the first year I went was the first year where guys said, you know, we're going to have this curfew. You have to be back by, to your hostel by like 11 or something. Um, but he left it to the Tokyo ADs to decide if they wanted to change that, and they did. So basically, at our hostel, we had a sign-in sheet, and if you were going to go somewhere, like, overnight or something where people shouldn't be expecting you back, um, you would just write that down. And so it was kind of a way for them to keep track just in case something happened, um, which nothing did, thank God, but um, some counselors the year before maybe got too rowdy or something. I don't know what his whole reasoning behind the curfew was, but we, our team didn't um, have an actual curfew. We just had to make sure we were being responsible for signing in and out when we arrived to our hostel and when we left. Just so our um, American director could kind of have an idea of who was where. Um, like I said, you will have to kind of fork up cash for different things that you want to do by yourself. Um, Mount Fuji kind of costs a lot because I wanted to get some Under Armour. 
so that was kind of expensive. And then our tickets down there and back, um, and so I had to pay for that myself, which of course you would expect. But they do give you money for food um, for each day. I don't know how much it's going now. Um, I think it was like 16 bucks or something when I went, but it could have changed, so don't expect that. Um, but they do give you some money for food, but don't plan on using that the whole trip because that's not going to last you. Um, if you do want to go somewhere, make sure you kind of look ahead of time to see if that's a plausible idea and how you would go about doing that. I had to do a lot of research for Fuji. Um, the other stuff, not so much, but if you want to do like a trip where you're going to go somewhere, you might want to look that up because that's going to make a difference. Okay, so of course you're going to be offered a host stay. And I don't know that it's mandatory anymore. I don't think it is. But if you're not going to do a host stay, then you kind of have to come up with your own accommodations and pay for that yourself. During the off days, if you're like at a hostel, the Guy Healy company will pay for that. So you don't have to worry about like booking a room and stuff. They'll cover that. But during your host stay, if you opt out, you have to come up with all that on your own. And so we had some people on my team my first year that did that. And... Um, you know, they just went and explored. I stayed with my host family, and they were super, super awesome. I love them. They The dad was from New Zealand, actually, so he spoke English, and he had a rad accent. It was really cool. And the mom spoke fluent English. Surprisingly, the daughters weren't really that good at English, but um, they were super nice. They had two daughters, um, and you get really close to your host family. I mean, they're only paid for your food, I'm pretty sure, and so they actually want you there. Like, they want you to spend time with them. So, um, when you go on your host day, you should bring a gift. Um, it sounds kind of weird, but Japanese people are really big gift givers, and that doesn't mean that they expect something huge, but, like, whenever they go somewhere, they always bring something with them to share, um... I know some of our international Japanese students at my college, um, one of them brought a whole bunch of gifts um, to like just give to people that she met here. And they were just like small little phone charms and stuff, but that's kind of what their mentality is, is that you just bring something to show your appreciation. So it doesn't have to be anything super huge. Um, some suggestions of things that you can do. Um, I know someone who brought um, pancake batter and syrup and then she cooked her host family breakfast and they really enjoyed that because one they didn't have to cook and two they kind of got like an American breakfast type of thing or some other American food um, for whatever reason whenever you see you go to a rest stop or you go somewhere at a souvenir shop it's usually food so if you can bring something specialized like um, they don't have cranberries really over there or, like, American peanut butter, although I don't know that they like that, um, or something local from where you're from. So, I'm from Minnesota, so, like, wild rice or saltwater taffy, different things, like, that you could possibly bring. Like, you probably wouldn't be able to bring, like, I don't, I don't really know food, from, like, a Philly cheesesteak. If you're from Philadelphia, you're probably going to be able to back that up with you. But if you can think of something, like, um, like, Hershey's is from Pennsylvania, so you could maybe bring a couple of Hershey's candy, or, like, the company, like, that, the candies from there, like, maybe do Twizzlers or something. I don't know. But, um, different specialized foods from where you're from. Um, you could also do sports stuff. I brought, for my family, um, jerseys that, <laughs> since the Vikings <laughs> kind of suck, which they're my team, I love them, but I'll admit they suck. The jerseys were, like, super, super cheap the year I went, so I just got four. Um, and they were, like, liter at Dick's Sporting Goods, they were literally, like, five bucks a piece for, like, adult jerseys. So, whatever, I, I got them all jerseys. Um, some people did, but you could do, like, um, the little pennants or, like, trading cards, stuff like that. Um, photo albums. Um, one of my friends made, like, kind of, like, a little photo album of stuff she liked and just different pictures from places she'd been in America, and her family really liked that, um, or different intro book type things like that. 
Um, I think it's always good if you specialize it to where you're from, because Japanese people really like that. So, stuff that's representative of your hometown or your state, like postcards or collectibles. I also brought postcards um, for my family. Um, that We have this huge sculpture garden in Minneapolis that has this really famous like cherry on the spoon, and so I got pictures from that. Um, different stuff like that. Um, American coins are kind of interesting for them, like shiny pennies or state quarters are cool. Um, that's a cool gift to give, like, the kids, because, you know, like, kids are so interested in money. Um, I mean, at least when my aunt would travel, she'd always bring me back, like, a buck from, like, another country, and I would, like, I actually love that. So that's kind of a good idea if you think you might have kids, you never know, just bring a couple state quarters. Um, Native American items, they really love dream catchers. I don't know why, but they really like those, so dream catchers. Or you can bring stuff to make dream catchers with your family. Um, you can look that up online, they're actually really easy to make. Um, American wildlife pictures, stuffed animals, that kind of stuff. Or stuff from your college, like, you know, maybe a couple pens or like a lanyard or something like that. Um, just something small that shows that you appreciate that they're going out of their way to take you into their family for a weekend and try to, like, make you feel at home. Because they really want you there, and your host family usually will be pretty awesome. I mean, I've never heard of a bad experience from a host family, so. <clears throat> Alright, so... Of course, you're going to kind of wonder, and I'm sure you've seen some lists around of things that you're going to want to bring, things you don't want to bring, but I'm going to give you the rundown straight from your girl right here. Um, and of course, I'm sure if you've read or seen other people or like talked to other people that have gone, you want to pack light because let me tell you, you are traveling every three days. Chances are you'll be in a different place every three days. And so think about that. How much do you really want to lug around every three days? Because <laughs> people aren't going to help you, by the way, in Japan. Like, if you're struggling, no one's going to help you, to be honest. So, let's talk about what you should bring. For um, clothes, I would suggest maybe one to two t-shirts as well as one to two tank tops. Um, make sure they're thick strap tank tops. You don't want the, like, spaghetti straps with the cleavage everywhere. Um, be conservative. Come on, you guys know what's appropriate around children, especially in a conservative country. Um, and so, I say only one to two because you will get two camp t-shirts um, that you will wear on the first and last day of camp. So you don't have to worry about that. Most facilities have washers. Um, they don't have dryers, so take that into consideration that you're going to want stuff that will dry, like, pretty well when you hang it. Um, so only one to two, like, t-shirts and tank tops of each. Um, a pair of pants, like, or jeans, and then two to four pairs of shorts. I rocked basketball shorts mo most of the summer, so, you know. Um, a sweatshirt is good because you will probably be arriving during the rainy season or like a like a windbreaker type of thing and um it gets pretty cool like I was actually surprised I wore my sweatshirt pretty much the first two weeks straight because I was actually kind of chilly of course you're going to want to bring undergarments um tennis shoes interesting thing about shoes is that maybe some of you know they don't wear shoes inside and if they do they are indoor shoes so I brought a pair of outdoor tennis shoes and a pair of indoor ones that I had never worn outside because I wear them at the gym um, and so you might want to do that you might just want to bring one um, most places have like little slippers you can wear inside um, that being said those are kind of gross to wear without socks so make sure you bring socks even if you don't plan on wearing tennis shoes at all or shoes that would need socks over the summer. Um, I would say bring flip-flops for sure. Um, they don't really take that much room in your suitcase and they're super easy to slip on and off because you will be slipping your shoes on and off all the time. Um, another thing you want to bring are like hair binders, headbands, or hats. Um, stuff to keep your, this is for girls mostly, but 
stuff to keep your hair out of your way because as much as you would like to think that you're going to like curl your hair every morning like at 5 a.m. before camp starts um, and look all cute, chances are you're going to be sweaty and running around with kids in the Japanese summer heat. Um, so you're probably going to wear your hair up almost every camp, to be honest. So stuff for that. Sunglasses, a watch. I don't wear watches. Wear a watch. I wear one every summer. Wear one with a second hand um, because that's good for your one minute drill. That helps a lot. And then one to two nicer outfits for off days or if your host family wants to take you out somewhere nice, it's always a good idea to have a nice outfit so you can go out. Um, as far as items go, this is kind of my general items list. Um, you're going to want to bring like an umbrella for sure because it's going to rain a lot. You can probably buy one at like the 100 yen shop so that's not a big like the dollar store but um, that's not a big deal but you're probably going to want an umbrella. A cheap mp3 player my iPod broke I think because of the humidity. Um, that didn't happen to anybody else but I'm kind of paranoid so um, I would say just get a cheap mp3 player use it over the summer. A camera for sure. I mean, even if you're not the type of person to take pictures, bring a camera because there's going to be stuff that you see that you are just going to want to take a picture of because you will see some weird stuff. We were walking down the street and we saw a guy in like this fruit outfit. Like, and I'm not talking about like a fruit suit, like a banana suit. It was like he had this hat with like all these fruits on it. His shirt was, like, all fruits. He had this, like, fruit nut. It was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen. And I didn't bring my camera with me that day, but my friend had. So, like, bring a camera with you. Um, you may or may not want to bring your computer. I, I don't know that you would need it. You will not find Wi-Fi like you find it in America. Chances are you won't get Wi-Fi except for your off days at your hostel. So you can bring your computer, but it's just an extra thing for you to lug around and worry about. Um, you'll want to bring a converter for kind of your electronics, like if you have like hair dryer or if you bring your computer. And they have the two prong, so make sure you get that one. Um, books, magazines, Water bottle for sure. Um, bring a water bottle. They don't have like water fountains like they do here. It is the weirdest thing. They don't have water fountains, I swear to God. Bring a water bottle. You will be happy you did. I actually brought two and one of my fellow counselors borrowed my other one because he didn't have one. Um, like I said before, maybe you want to bring a pillow. Um, for sure bring a journal. I didn't bring one my first summer. And I really wish I had because, I mean, there's so many things that my friend, like, my friends and I talk about from that summer. I'm like, what are you talking about? We never did that. And she's like, yeah, we did. And I don't remember it. Um, and I wish I would have written it all down. And I did this last summer. And it's really nice because, you know, like, the other week I just wanted to go look back and be like, what the hell did I do this summer? Like, I just want to go down memory lane. And it was nice because I had it all right there. Um, this is actually my journal from this last summer. Um, it's called a smash, a smash book. Um, you can find them from, um, craft stores usually carry them, but it's basically meant to be kind of like a, um, what are they, a scrapbook, um, like a built-in scrapbook. Um, it comes with a pen that, I don't have the pen here, but it comes with a pen with like a glue stick at the end. Um, and so basically like they have like different pattern backgrounds and here's like my ticket so I just glued a bunch of stuff in here um like they have I don't know it was really cool like we did origami in one of my classes I actually taught at a school this summer um for my intern position um but they just have like different patterns in here okay Mr. Donut which this is reverse because I have a Mac computer but Mr. Donut is the jam you have to eat there at least once while you're in there um I went to a concert this summer so it was like this crazy thing called Visual K I just saw that they were having a concert so I just went in and I was like what the hell is this um but it was cool like it was just a random thing so you have different pictures all up in here someone's business card 
Um, but, like, seriously, you should journal because um, I'm really happy I did this last summer. And, like, I wanted to go through and, like, see what I did this last summer. And I can just, like, be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. That was so much fun. So bring a journal. Um, you might want to bring a hand towel. Um, they kind of have these types of towels there. It's like really long and like skinny. Um, but it's so that they can like wipe the sweat off their face. And that's why I say bring a hand towel or something like this because you will want to wipe the sweat off your face because you will be sweating a lot. Um, like I said, your gift for your host family, stuff like that. As far as items that are camp specific, you might want to bring a photo album just so your campers can kind of see what it's like where you're from, or a map, just to show them, because trying to explain on your hand where you live in America is kind of confusing, and that's usually what I did. It didn't really make that much sense. Um, coloring stuff's fun. Um, you have to bring Uno or cards. I swear to God, it will save your life. Like, those times when you're working with a group and you're just really tired and you need a break, pull out Uno and I swear to God, they'll just zone out. Um, bring Uno. Or cards. I mean, they actually have some really interesting games that you can learn how to play. Um, friendship bracelet string, so you can, like, do stuff like that. Um, notebooks, candy, that kind of stuff's fun for your campers. Items that would be, like, medical that you might need to bring. Um, obviously any medicine you have to take. But aspirin, bug spray, sunscreen, um, a mini first aid kit might be good. Vitamins. Oh. <clears throat> Cough drops because you'll be there during the rainy season and then it'll literally like boom halfway through it'll turn into the dry season like one day you'll wake up and you'll be like huh sky's clear um and it gets really dry and so I mean I never thought so but some people complained about it so you might want cough drops because of the weather change but also because you're usually like yelling at the top of your lungs for excitement during your camps and I'm not even joking or doing camp songs that you will wear your voice out um so, cough drops. Um, vitamins. Now, don't be immature and laugh right now, um, but fiber pills, because you won't get fiber there. So you're going to need to solve that situation somehow. Um, fiber pills. Um, granola or cliff bars. I included this under medical because it didn't really seem to fit anywhere else, but... Um, you might want to bring some granola bars because there will be camps that you're just not going to be able to eat a lot of the food. Or you just might be, like, so energetic and doing so much stuff that you'll get really hungry throughout the day. So you will probably want some granola bars or something like that. Um, hygienic products. Obviously, you're going to want to bring shampoo, conditioner, toothpaste, toothbrush, floss, face wash, body wash, or soap. Um, and like I said, a towel and a hand towel. And you're going to want, like, a full towel, too, because that's not provided for you. Alright, woohoo, we made it through the whole thing. Hot damn did I talk a lot. I mean, I feel like I'm running out of breath. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much, um, but that's kind of it. That's the basics behind camp. I mean, that's a lot of stuff, but you'll get to know more, um, when you're at uh, orientation and if you guys do have any questions about this stuff um, just post some comments below and I'll be sure to answer you but hopefully that was helpful um, if it was please let me know or give me a like or something if it wasn't do the opposite um, but let me know still um, or things that you were curious about that weren't put in the video um, and yeah I hope you guys if you are going and you've been confirmed that you're going, I hope you have an amazing summer um, because it is such a wonderful program and a life-changing experience. If you are thinking about applying for next year or, you know, you were just checking this video out to see what camp is like, then I really hope you decide to do it um, and it's something you're interested in because it is 
a great experience. So, that being said, thanks for watching my long ass rambling video, and I hope you guys have an awesome time. See you later. Bye!